Hi, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Happy Friday. Sorry, my hair's a little crazy. <laughs> uh, I forgot to adjust my journal. All right, well, welcome. My name is Darlene. I am with Featherweight Doctor here in beautiful North Idaho. And it is my favorite show of the week. It is the Sip and Sew. Um, tonight, I am sipping. Oh, just hold on, my chair is tied up. Good Lord, Darlene. Tonight, I am sipping water. Just forgot to pick up wine. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. I can't turn water into wine. So we're just sipping water tonight. Um, I'm going to work on a project that I started this morning. I'm hoping to get the rest of the quilting done on it. How was your week? Let's chat. I need a proper Billy laugh tonight. Let's do it. Um, so let's see. Today was a little bit unusual. It was kind of slow around here. So I decided to do some extra filming and my day started off this morning with um, <clears throat> filming my third installment of the Ombre Sunset block of the month. And it was very fun. I have to tell you guys a little funny though. <sighs> if you are paying to join the block of the month, uh, everything went smoothly on the take, the second take. But that was the second take and not the first take. I got all the way through explaining the whole thing doing the whole thing and then or getting all the sandwich prepared and then i realized that um yeah i do, apparently don't know how to cut a fat quarter because it was two inches short on one side if i'm being fully transparent so i had to cut and start all the way over again with <laughs> with a properly sized quilted sandwich who knew hi kim warren all right, she's sipping water too, and so is Susan. Great, super. I have a very large collection of lidded coffee cups here. I noticed this morning, because I make myself a coffee on my way in um, every morning, and uh, I forget to bring them home. So I have a large collection that is going home today to get washed properly. Okay, I'm gonna turn my volume down because I had it up earlier. Let's see here. Who is on? All right. Christina's on from Portland. Hi. Good to see you again. Kathy Hager is on. Hello, my friend. Um, <clears throat> I had a fabulous quilt camp. Uh, camp Christina wants to know. It was so much fun. I hope um, maybe you'll be able to join us next year. You can come up with Odie from Portland. Uh, it was... <sighs> really far exceeded my expectations and everybody was so wonderful and it was a it was a fantastic fantastic camp i already have the next years on the calendar um hopefully there'll be some open seats because i know a lot of people are planning on coming back again <laughs> hi sandra razor my she says hello my quilting mentor <laughs> you're so funny oh <laughs> kathy wants everybody to know that it's hot as hades in texas east texas I'm pretty glad I'm here, Kathy. It's an even temp temp at 77 outside. It's kind of spectacular, actually. Hi, Sarah from King, North Carolina. Thanks for saying hey. All right. And Kimberly is on from Tacoma. Hello. Cindy Matthews is on. Hi, Nancy in Apache Junction, Arizona. Um, Cindy Matthews and I had a cute little conversation this week. She was... Uh, telling me that I wanted to know if I had stock in Band-Aids. I'm like, I wish. <laughs> Just an avid user of Band-Aids, that's all. I didn't even show that earlier that week when I was, the, it's been like machine central this week with all kinds of crazy things that I have not seen before. Um, but my hands have just been an absolute mess. And I had one Band-Aid for one of my social media things on my thumb because I immediately put my needle through my thumb, the first, first thing out of the gate. Um, and then had to go from there. But anyway, so, uh, so if this is the first time you're joining us, or if you you're new to the channel, this show is really about fun. That's all this show is about. Um, if anybody has any questions, hi, Sandy Fowler and hi Rose over on YouTube. 
please feel free to throw them out. I'd love to throw some good education in here amongst the fun. Um, but this show is really more about fun and I'm in a season where I need some fun in my life. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I did release a really cool video earlier today on Facebook and um, Instagram. For those of you who caught it live, I went through the bits and pieces and parts in our maintenance kit and why they're important and why um, you might want to change out things like your LED light bulb and your bed cushions. Um, Bunny, hello, hello, hello. Oh, good. Your package got there. Perfect. Bonnie Pelton has been a avid viewer for, gosh, it was like, I think it was the first COVID winter, Bonnie, that you and I found, found each other online. And she just bought one of our foot controller converters, which are like those clapper things. And she says it's a game changer. I couldn't agree more. Actually, this foot controller converter and my quarter inch foot is a complete game changer when it comes to the featherweight. Okay, so I'm going to get going here. Let me do this and this and this and this and this. Okay, I want to get going on some sewing. So what I'm doing today is I am in the middle, well, month three of the block of the month called Ombre Sunset that I designed. It is a skill building <laughs> uh, enrichment for you and your sewing machine. It's so you can gain confidence in your free motion and your regular machine quilting on your domestic sewing machine. No, you don't need a featherweight to participate. Um, uh, so what this is, Sarah's like, what is that? Um, this is month three. This is month my sampler for month three. So I'm just continuing the stitch out on it um, because I didn't finish it on camera this morning. And so that's what we're doing. I'm just working on this little sampler. <laughs> um, oh yes, Christina agrees the the foot controller our uh, foot controller converters are amazing. All right, so I'm just gonna start stitching along. Can you all see? I think I yes, I did. Okay, uh, we are changing up some stuff on our production side here. This this summer, you know, it's slower. It's never slow, but it's slower. So let's just give ourselves a big a big project. My poor husband. Um, he's going to be helping with some video stuff and hopefully things will start looking a little more sharp and professional. Although I'm pretty sure you guys watch because I'm not sharp and professional. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. So I am using a walking foot. I'm, my sewing machine tonight is a 1941 factory black side named Morticia. My husband's about to yell Vader from on the other side of the camera. No, when I'm using her, I'll call her what I want. Thank you very much. <gasps> Sandy Reese, hello, hello, hello. Uh-oh, uh, Cindy says I have a one featherweight that I can't see at the bulb. It doesn't stay in tight. Can I try? I know it's the right one, okay. Let's talk about that. So, Cindy, um, here, hang on, let me get to a place where I can stop. And I'll show you what a how I. It's all about position and leverage when it comes to your getting your light bulb in and out. We don't have to be the strongest species. We just have to know how to put the machine in the right position. Okay, I'm gonna just get myself out of this little thing here. I'm gonna do my little locking stitches. Okay, cool. So what I would try, my dear, is can, how can you see? I'm not gonna unthread this because it's black thread and Lord help me, I'm not trying to thread this again on camera with the lights in my eyes. But what you need to do, Cindy, is tip the machine like this on her back. Make sure your bed extension isn't floppy and it's not going to slap down and divot your thing. But then you can push down and really get good leverage. So to get it in, it's down and clockwise or towards the front of the machine to lock it in. To get it out, it's push down and twist backwards or counterclockwise or towards the back of the machine to get it out. That should definitely... Um, help get the machine, the bulb seated properly. It also might be that you have dirty contacts in your 
um, back of your lamp assembly, Cindy. So I would might check with a flashlight to shine in there and see if the two connections in the back of the socket are exposed and not covered in soot. So try that. All right. Uh, Kat's on from Virginia. Hello, Kat. And Karen's on. Hello, Karen. Oop, my watch is talking. Um, Karen, you might recognize the video from this morning. I'll be sending it out here soon um, for all of my ombre sunset folks. Karen joins me on cameras. Whenever I'm approaching a place where I have to make a nice clean pivot, with my machine, I always stitch right up to the place and then stop about three stitches out and roll the hand wheel towards it, um, especially on a fast machine like Morticia where she will just jet right past something if I take my foot off too late. Yep, Christina, yep, yep, yep. Lefty, Lucy, righty, tighty, exactly. Hi, Don Williams, late is better than never, that's fine. So for those of you who this looks kind of interesting, it is not too late to join Ombre Sunset. It's I just recorded my third installment this morning and I can send back videos and all that fun stuff. So if you are interested still in joining us, even though the program is off the ground, I can absolutely send you all the back content and you are welcome to join us moving forward. We usually do it on the last Saturday of every month, but we can't do it tomorrow because I'm going to be in Eastern Washington for a very good size re um, featherweight workshop at Stitch in Reardon, Washington. I'm really excited about it. It's my first time to this venue. I've met the owner several times. She's great. I mean, great. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be fun. I'm bringing Andy with me. I need a I need an assistant. Don't tell him I said that. Okay. Debbie Meshack, I miss you too, sweetheart. I hope you are well. <laughs> okay, good. Cindy's going to work on her light bulb and appears to, yeah, the piece of, if you're putting in the new light bulb, the new light bulb is soft and squishy enough. You shouldn't need the clear plastic tube. You should be able to just do it with your fingers. Oh, Debbie, you're in Wenatchee. Come over to Reardon. It's not that far. Come say hi. I'll be there tomorrow, 1030 to four. <laughs> Sue says, oh my gosh, I just got a new bulb today in the mail and it's wonderful. How, and I was wondering how to insert it. Good. I'm glad that helped you. Hi, Rhonda says here recouping from total knee replacement. Good Lord. On the 13th, other knee was in January. Glad I only have two knees. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm done. <laughs> I'm glad you're done too. I'm glad you're recuperating. Okay. Oh, okay. Hi, Beth. I've got two grandkids here and we're making chocolate Oreo parfaits. Mm, hello. No sewing this weekend. We'll watch after the kids are in bed. Okay. And I did get your message and we do need to finalize the contract for the fall. I, I did see it. I just haven't had a chance to respond yet. I think Western, uh, Eastern Washington is going to be very hot tomorrow. It's gen generally the hottest part of the state. Another little tip here, just while I'm sewing this, I don't know if you guys just saw what I did. I got a little overzealous with Morticia and I shot past where I wanted to stop and pivot. And versus like the absolute wrong thing to do here would be to throw the machine in, or I'm sorry, would be to roll the hand wheel backwards. We do not, oh, she's got a thread on her hand wheel. How tacky. We do not, ladies and gentlemen, we do not 
roll the hand wheel backwards. If you have to back up, you either put the machine in reverse, still roll the hand wheel forward, or I've been known to just pick up the pressure foot with the needle knot in the fabric and kind of scooch it back and then keep going forward. Yes, Christina, we did get moved into our new old house and we are just trying to get a handle on all of the things. You know, this is the fourth house that Andy and I have owned that we've moved into and we've done eight moves in eight years, but this is only the fourth one that we've purchased. And other than our house that we owned in Scottsdale, this one is definitely um, needing some updating and is decades, and I mean decades, uh, of, of deferred maintenance and all that stuff. So we got into the house and you know how you kind of walk through things with rose colored glasses on, you're like, oh, look at the view, look at the property, look at the creek, all the things. And then you get in there and you're like, this refrigerator <laughs> is duct taped together and the dishwasher is held together by zip ties, zip ties. So, so we bought some new appliances yesterday. <laughs> Buying new appliances is like putting tires on your car. There's nothing fun about buying tires for your car. It's strictly a functional thing. Um, but I really, really like to cook and I, um, really like to entertain and having appliances that are falling apart is, is horrible. It's horrible. So Andy, well, I was going to say Andy treated me to new appliances, but we kind of, we treated me to new appliances. <laughs> Sandy said, how old is your house? Uh, our house was built by a gentleman. Uh, we bought it from his daughter in the, in the early seventies. I is it 76, 74, 76. It's a, it's a Lindell wood home, like a log home. Um, and it's, it's great. I mean, it's great. The space is wonderful, but just lots of lots and lots of things to do. Um, Kathy says, what do you call in very hot a hundred or, or feelings or feels a hundred and above. I think hot, I think, Oh, I think Eastern Washington is probably going to be we could have a hundred and it's not a dry heat like in Scottsdale. I know hot girl. I lived in Scottsdale. <laughs> Kathy says it needs a lot of TLC. It'll be okay soon enough. It's already okay now. I am, I'm probably the least bougie person you'll ever meet. I mean, my idea of a vacation is going dry camping on a river raft with a fly flip fishing rod in my hand and, and having some bougie would be having someone else cook the meals and put the camp up. I am not fancy. I am not fancy at all. And this house fits me pretty well. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Polly's on Polly from UK. Hi, sweet pea. She says, happy Friday. Hoping you're doing okay. Have been doing some drop drop leg tool bags for my little feather on my little feather weights this week. Nice. We are so hot and muggy here. Can't wait for a proper thunderstorm to clear the air. Girl, you and I, I don't know. I can't do thunder. It scares me. My kids, I used to tell my kids that when it was thundering outside that God was bowling. And so they still say that to me. Oh, I guess that was a strike, mom. I love that. But they remember that little stuff. Kat says, wondering if there are any consensus on the production runs of other weights that run faster, that run faster, better, quieter, stronger. I've heard people make claims from their own. No, that's a bunch of hooey. <laughs> I, I call bunk on that. Um, I will say that like the, the pre-war machines, in particular the feather or the, not the feather, it's, the um, school bells do run faster um, because they have that bigger key, uh, gear tooth pattern. But but there wasn't like a production run that was made that was more robust than anyone else. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a real claim. Rhonda says, I have not had my walking foot on my featherweight uh, to machine quilt yet. Need to do this when I heal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you do. Polly says, at least buying new appliances weren't a birthday present. <gasps> Happy birthday to me. 
if your hubby buys you appliances for a present, that's a major no-no. I don't know. I, again, not, not bougie, very practical. Like a Dyson for my birthday would be really nice. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Uh, la la la. Let's see. Let's uh, let's see. We are in a new house since yes, 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 yes. Don says the inspector passed all of our appliances, but we end up having to replace all of them within the year. I get that. I get it. Oh, here we go, Kathy. She says seventy six, seventy four ain't that old. Hell, I graduated in seventy three, and I'm not that old. <laughs> The house has not been updated though. Like this is still has that seventies feel. I think the kitchen was probably updated in the late eighties. It's not, it's not gross. It's just brown. Everything is brown. There's a lot of wood. <laughs> it's a wood home. <laughs> yes, Carolyn, Karen, I am collecting, um, recipes still for, for Ray. If anybody wants to mail in, something for Ray. Um, I've put together a basket, um, for her. Well, actually it wasn't me. It was Carolyn, uh, Kathy Sheffield, but, um, collecting some recipe cards for her. Um, her fiance cannot eat, eat, avoids dairy and fish. So if the recipes would not include dairy or fish, that would be great, but send us your favorite recipes. I'd love to put it in, um, another basket for the wedding in September for her. That's awesome. <laughs> Cindy over on Facebook, she says she loves thunderstorms, but the dog doesn't. Both my labs are cool with thunderstorms. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, Connie Rank Smith, hi, sweetheart. Uh, why do the earlier featherweights run quieter? So the reason why specifically is um, the featherweights have a gear, have plate gears both in the upper and the lower portion of the featherweight. Um, and they have a tooth pattern on them, which is why we grease them every year to make sure that we're not wearing down our gears. The school bell featherweights had a plate gear that had deeper teeth, 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 tooth, tooth oh my gosh, can't even talk, tooth grooves. And if in an equation, if all things are considered equal, the force of the motor, the, you know, the speed of the pulley, but you have deeper tooth gears, it's going to go faster. My Mary, that Della, sweet Della from Louisiana purchased from me, that machine flew, flew. She was a second production run, 1934. So that's why I feel, this is just my own opinion, by the way. So you can take that for what it's worth. I feel like those, um, those particular um, school bells, sorry, my words are escaping me this afternoon, are faster. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kat says, I missed something. What is the program you said people can join? Oh, it's called the Ombre Sunset. Uh, it's the block of the month. I'm working on one of the samples right now. I taught this uh, class earlier this morning via camera. Um, this particular month, so generally speaking, my virtual people join me over a Zoom class. And then I have two sessions because we filled up so quick here in North Idaho of people joining me on the last Saturday of every month. It's $20 um, and you get a pattern for a quilt as you go with a big 18 inch block. And what it is, is it's time dedicated to honing your, your free motion quilting and your machine quilting skills, either on your feather rate or your regular machine. You can go out to the website and if you search ombre, O-M-B-R-E sunset, um, you'll see all the information about it. Beth Varnum says, actually, I did want a Dyson for my birthday about 1997. It's still going strong. See? A Dyson. Is Andy, hint, hint. Dyson, good birthday present. He has to wait till the fall, though. That's when my birthday is. Your what? <laughs> he says he's good. He just bought me new appliances. <laughs> I had a lot of grass, green glass lighting. when we Oh, when you got into your house? Oh, mm. I like green. But not as the lighting in my house. <laughs> a Dyson hair dryer. Now that's a damn good expensive present. 
I don't, I, I do not own, I had a, okay, y'all, I had a Dyson because my sister gave it to me, the twin sister, and it wasn't running right. So I pulled it all apart with a YouTube video. And when I put it back together, it wouldn't turn on again. <laughs> no one let me near your Dyson. Featherweights only. Gail's on. <laughs> she says, oh wait, Brenda or Rhonda says, any gifts for my home I don't mind. Makes my life more enjoyable and easier for me. Exactly. Let's see. Gail says, 70s isn't old. My first home was vintage, was a vintage 1900. Whoa. We had to totally re re uh, renovate from wiring to plumbing. It was a real learning experience. <sighs> Let's see here. Oh, see, Dawn says her husband Rick got her a Dyson six years ago for her birthday. She says, I love it. Dogs. <laughs> Cindy says, Darlene, you said you have a specific walking foot that you use. Is the, the narrow arrow like, is the narrow, the footprint narrow? Oh, um, it is not as narrow as the feed dogs on the featherweight, Cindy. It is not. <laughs> okay. So with each month of this particular, of this particular uh, program, there is mostly walking foot quilting. And then you can do, uh, woo, paper flying. You, there is what I call an advanced variation, which would include some free motion quilting. If you were feeling gutsy, uh, by month six, though, I'm going to kind of force you to at least attempt free motion quilting. At least attempt it. Hi, Luna. Hi, baby girl. Good girls. You guys want to say hi to Luna? Lulu, sit. 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 Good. Hi, sweet pea. She's untethered here in the store, so she's just walking around looking for stuff to put in her mouth that doesn't belong. <laughs> I, it's, it, it's a puppy thing. It's a Labrador thing. Everything goes in her mouth. Everything. She chewed up one of my leather featherweight earrings the other day. I was not happy with her. And she smuggles things in her mouth where she's like, I'm not holding anything. I'm like, yes, you are. Spit it out. <laughs> Woohoo. Put your feet dogs down, darling. She is very sweet, but just to me. She doesn't like Andy very much. She all out ugly growls at him when he tries to sit by me on the couch if she's on me, if shees by me on the couch. My girl child, that, that guy pays your food bill. You should be sweet. says when we she got married a friend of mine and her husband bought an unmodernized 1703 house for the first seven years of their marriage she stayed with a friend and he lived on a motor <laughs> they bought the house and they didn't even live in it <laughs> i mean i guess some people do that <laughs> Um, Laura wants to know what is the biggest quilt I've ever quilted on a featherweight. Um, without using a quilt as you go technique where I'm working on, like this is one block of a much larger quilt. Um, I guess I've done a small lap. It would be a bigger than a crib, but not like a, I don't know the exact dimensions. It's really tight trying to roll things up in the neck of the machine. It's one of the reasons why I really like doing the quilt as you go technique, because then, um, you know, you can do one block at a time and then hook everything together and 
you can make a king size quilt if you wanted predominantly on your featherweight. Did you mark the back before you started quilting? I'm at, this is actually the front. I marked the front. You can see my, I used my friction pen and I drew my pattern on before I even, so I'm basically just quilting by number at this point. Not, not by number, by line, I should say. You're welcome. Kat says she doesn't know if the, her friend, the couple friend ever got it finished, but at least they put in electricity and plumbing. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, Annie and I are going to go find some dinner before we have to go look at flooring. Everybody pray for me. Andy and I do not see eye to eye when it comes to general aesthetics of houses. So it's always a challenge picking out couches and flooring and paint colors. I have to tell you a little story before I jump off. One time, Andy wanted to paint some walls in our Scottsdale house white. 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 So we go to Home Depot. We go to the wall of white paint chips. And him and my daughter proceed to pick apart every paint chip on the wall except for like four or five. They all looked white to me, everybody. I just want to put that out there. They were white. <laughs> and, then, and then we had to buy a sample of every one of the ones that they thought might be mildly acceptable. Y'all should have heard them talking about it. It was like, no, that has a pink base. No, that has a brown base. No, that has a yellow base. Then we had to buy all four or five, I can't remember how many there were, uh, ones that they thought were mildly acceptable. We had to take them home and we had to paint a small patch on every wall in different rooms to see how the sun hit them and whether it made the room look pink. Y'all, the paint was white. <laughs> All of the white. This is what picking out flooring and paint is with my husband. Everybody feel bad for me. <laughs> Polly says deluxe paint drift is one of my favorite paint colors. Woman, don't take their side. <laughs> All right, friends. It was really nice to hang out with you. And I got a proper belly laugh. So it's been a good, it's been a good day. I will see everybody next week. I'm changing things up a little bit about how I'm videoing and shooting. So if you guys have suggestions, if you'd like me to cover some material, even if I've covered it before, I'd love for you to email me at info at featherweightdoctor.com. And I'd love to, uh, I'd love to put it on the show. So thanks all for hanging out with me. <laughs> thanks. Oh, wait. My suggestion is to not get very dark walnut colored flooring. It just shows all the desk. Good call. Good call.